You might not realize, but I've been into video conferencing for a long time, since the days of See You, See Me and NetMeeting back in the 1990s. But it's been a while since the concept has been rethought in the age of Facebook. And today we're going to see Socialize, which does just that. Who are you? I'm Rob Williams. I'm the CEO of Socialize. And you may not realize this, but I was actually the uh, first development manager for NetMeeting back at Microsoft mm -hmm. in the uh, mid-90s. And after that, I left Microsoft and have done a number of different startups. And Socialize is my most recent. Uh, and we're really exploring, as you said, the intersection of video with the social graph. Who are you? I'm Rob Glazer, uh, co-founder and chairman of Socialize. Uh, incredibly excited to be here and be uh, getting ready to talk publicly about Socialize for the first time. Uh, prior to Socialize, I founded a company called Real Networks uh, that I was CEO of for about uh, 15, 16 years and stepped down about a year ago. I'm still chairman. Uh, and uh, this is, to me, one of the most exciting things I've worked on and I think arguably Socialize the most exciting new product since uh, original Real Audio in 95. That's interesting because for somebody to say that, why do we need to, re and maybe I don't know who wants to answer this, but why do we need to rethink video conferencing? Well, I think the way that people collaborate now in the age of social networks is very, very different than the way they used to when last time people really thought about how to build a video conferencing model. Um, the way kids grow up today is they're used to working in open spaces, being able to hang out with people. So there's a blurring of the lines between the personal and the work. Um, and lets people really be collaborate in a much more open and dynamic manner than they ever did before. But it becomes more problematic when those people are actually distributed geographically. Uh, you imagine someone who's worked with a friend at university, but then one of them goes to maybe Microsoft on an internship. The other one does something on the East Coast or down in the Valley. They start to lose those connections. They're not uh, able to hang out together as much as they used to be able to. And so I think we can actually use the social graph to bring those people back together. What, what is it that you're announcing today? Well, we're announcing that we're launching social, Socialize, our new product um, that is a social video product that lets people connect with their Facebook friends uh, in much more dynamic and powerful ways than they have before in real time. Go beyond the Facebook friends to actually connect with people who have a shared interest or passion. For example, people who like to go hiking uh, or share an interest in Ultimate Frisbee. And finally, to do that both in real time and asynchronously so that when people aren't online at the same time, they can still communicate. Uh, by leaving each other videos or sending messages. Okay. Um, the old net meeting needed a, a download to work, and right. we both needed to download it just to talk to each other. What's up with this? Is this a, a download model? Yeah, you don't need a download at all to use Socialize. It works just inside of any browser, as long as you have a pretty recent version of Flash and a pretty recent browser. At this stage, the audio video stack has pretty much been commoditized, and all the interesting things are at the application layer. Um, so one of the very powerful things we can do is socialize is roll out, um, something that works across every user, 500 million users around the world, um, with essentially no software download. Yeah. And I was just going to say that, I mean, that what we've done is basically we started with that layer of you know, sort of if you know from the beginning that you're going to make something that's going to be inherently a social video service, uh, one of the things we start with is genuine identity. So that's why, as Rob mentioned, we start with uh, Facebook Connect as a, a, as a basic layer. But additional to that, because we thought we wanted to create something that would make it really easy for people to find uh, people who had common interest, we built groups in. So groups is built directly into the fabric of Socialize. And yeah. uh, you can form groups of people that you already know. Uh, you can join other people's groups that have been established, or you can create your own new private groups. And those can be groups of, of people with a common interest. They can be groups of people that work together. They can be old friends that are scattered around the world. Whatever you want to make of a group. And then the, the third thing is, is deeply integrated into this uh, is a feed, just like Twitter or Facebook, so you can f be tr keep track of what's going on, not just what's happening live while you're, while you're on Socialize, but what happened between the last time you got on Socialize and now. So we think that kind of creates the kind of social fabric that's going to make Socialize a place that people uh, can find very easy to come back to uh, again and again to have a, a really great communal experience. Back in uh, the 1996 world of net meeting, just to find you, I had we both had to register on this uh, directory service right. called ILS, if I remember right. <laughs> oh my God, that's <laughs> crazy, right? I spent yeah. a lot of time there. Really, <laughs> I had one of the uh, top websites uh, about NetMeeting, and we, I was crazy about it. But we it were was a little ahead of our time. A little time. ahead, but yeah. it was hard to find people mm -hmm. because most people weren't on NetMeeting, and so you'd have to convince Rob to join 
NetMe, right. download the software, join this directory, and then you know there was multiple directories, right. so we had to be on the same one. <laughs> What's different well, in today's a, world? Yeah, I mean, I think at this point we really have the authentication problem, the identi identity problem has really been solved. Uh, in the social sphere, it's being solved by Facebook. You pretty much know that anyone on Facebook is a real person, and you can validate who they are by who they're connected to. Now, there are other also, uh, you know, valid authentication networks out there. You think of LinkedIn in the uh, business space, but relatively, relatively solved problem, um, and lets you actually quite easily go beyond those five or six people who you've communicated with closely. The average Skype list is six people yeah. uh, to reach out to a much broader audience of people. The problem is then, actually deciding who you want to talk to and when, because these people are now uh, slightly more distant relationships to you. Yeah. How do, I, uh, how do you call me on Socialize? Do you need to know that I'm on Socialize, or do, I, do you have to convince me to join <laughs> Socialize? Um, Socialize runs both inside of Facebook and outside of Facebook, so it's yeah. pretty easy to find out whether someone's online or not. Um, we do also have a downloadable desktop notifier that you can run if you're not inside of the browser. That gives you persistent presence on the service. And so if I'm just running that on my desktop, someone tries to call me, that will ring, I'll have an opportunity to launch my browser from there. The call waits until you actually launch the browser and then it completes inside of the browser. Yeah. Back in the 1990s world of video conferencing, if, if I wanted to, if I was talking to you and then I want to talk to Rob, I'd have to hang up on you and then call him. What's this new world like? Um, it's pretty different. Uh, you know, the, up until Socialize, there were really two models of communicating with people with video conferencing tools. One was person to person, and the other was, let's all get into a, a group meeting together, and, and the 12 of us will stare at each other uh, for half an hour, and then we'll hang up. Well, the social graph doesn't work like that. I may need to have a uh, conversation with people I'm working with while still wanting to have a window open to my kitchen at home so I can see what my kids are up to. I might also have someone drop by for a business meeting, and then introduce them to my coworkers, have a specific private conversation with them, and then return to my coworkers. Um, so with Socialize, we've built that model in. So you can have multiple windows open, and each one of the connections is peer-to-peer. -peer. And then we've got very, very powerful tools for actually connecting each of the windows together so that you can create ad hoc groups of people to have meetings with, which we think is how people actually collaborate together nowadays, uh, much more so than they used to in the past. Yeah. Um, how are you guys using it? Well, it's been fascinating because I, we've been using Socialize in, our, in its private, uh, you know, pre-beta and development period for about six, seven months, uh, and it's made a virtual team feel really connected because we've had people at various points. One of, one of our developers was based in Europe. A couple of our developers were in, in San Francisco. Before we had an office, we were all very virtual, and it was amazing. This is one of the tightest teams I've ever worked with, uh, and I give Socialize a huge amount of credit for that because even when it was just bare bones, it's basically working. We started eating our own dog food, and it's amazing. I live in Seattle. Company's based in San Francisco, and I feel more connected to this team, and I feel like I know everybody on the team, even though there are two or three members of the team that I'd never met face to face uh, in a physical sense. So for, for us, I mean, that's been very powerful to see that kind of uh, the, 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 that sense of connection and that sort of community and sort of just hanging out uh, that, that comes from uh, uh, what Socialize can bring. Yeah, this is a free service, right? Absolutely, 100% uh, free. 100% free. free. Yep. Not so I don't pay anything. for anything? Nope. Okay. At some point in the future, we may add some premium features based on feedback from users, or it may be you know, free forever in the way that like, you know, Facebook or, or Twitter is, uh, where there's, there's not a premium option. But in any event, whether we have a premium option or not, there'll always be a great free experience, because this is fabric, right? This has to be something where you can, with no friction, invite anybody you want onto it, and they can go on and you can start communicating. Yeah. Tell me about the architecture. When I call you, it, it, are my packets going through the socialized service, or, right. um, or are we totally peer to peer? Tell me a little bit about. It's the pretty complicated architecture, actually, yeah. and um, that's good. this could be a long discussion. But the, <laughs> <laughs> the short version of it is that uh, Adobe's uh, Flash stack now has a peer to peer uh, fabric built right into it, and we make use of that to the maximum extent possible because um, it gives us the lowest latency con uh, connections between people. So what we'll try and do is establish a peer-to-peer -peer connection between two, two points. If that fails, we'll fail over to our media servers and route it through the server network so that people always have a connection that comes up. Okay. Um, and we also use our media service for things like messaging and uh, other things like that. Yeah. Does it go through firewalls or uh, the, NATs It's pretty or good at like penetrating that? firewalls, actually. I mean, the rule of thumb with, um, with any peer-to-peer -peer software is you can get up to about 70% uh, direct connections, and then after that it gets hard. Okay. Uh, you said it's uh, based on Flash, so that means my iPhone and my iPad won't work, right? Um, what we're doing is 
using very standard protocols inside of Flash. So, so Flash is H.263 encoding, but it can decode 264, which is the native format of the iPhone. Um, and then it's RTMP up. The, I mean, we're not announcing at this stage that we have anything on the iPhone, but we think we'll have a heterogeneous solution that works everywhere. Uh, really soon. And that yeah. preserves the zero download features. And that's, you know, look, our, our view is this, that we, when we started coming up with the idea of what became socialized, uh, we were thinking about developments on the PC, like the, the social graph uh, being opened up through Facebook Connect, like the availability of Flash 10 to make it zero download. And what, what the third sort of technological pillar was front-facing camera phones, like the, uh, uh, like the iPhone 4. Yeah. Uh, we, we thought the best thing to do was to create the sort of the, the, the clear concept and sort of the fully idealized form uh, on the PC and then figure out what pieces of that and hopefully large subset make sense to bring onto a, a mobile handset. Uh, the fact that today the you know these first forms of these mostly work over Wi-Fi and not over uh, 3G, uh, it's certainly not, not, not something like FaceTime, uh, suggests to us that there's going to be a little bit of a maturation period because at the end of the day what you'd want is like, I don't know when you're on, I know what your, what your phone number is, but I don't know when you're Wi-Fi versus 3G, so we clearly want a solution that works under either of those spectrum conditions, um, can it just work? And everything's changing. I just got a Verizon phone that has a hotspot. My iPad can go on that hotspot sure. now. I mean, uh, and there's a new iPad coming out, and there's yes, I mean, yeah. Just the in the last month, there's been an HP tablet, uh, a it's, Motorola tablet, which is tablet, great, right? You never want to bet against Moore's law. There's yeah. some great things happening here, and communication devices are moving from phones to tablets, and the communication experience people are going to expect on those faster devices goes beyond just a person-to-person -person video call. Yeah, so. Um, That's what we're aiming for. Today, if the three of us are in a call, I can't record you, can I? You can't record uh, and do you the call entire a conversation. Call, by the way, or we, we, we call them calls. <laughs> yes, we, call. <laughs> yeah, we call them calls. We call, we have, we, we call them uh, call for video and chat for text. Because uh, okay. that's sort of become the terminology people use. Yeah, no, we, we decided to do for the for the, the, the first version we're releasing is make recording a message and making a call separate things. A logical next step would be to actually have the ability to have uh, live conversations be recordable. Uh, and when we introduce that feature, which I'm guessing will at some point, we want to make sure that everybody who's on the call gives permission and consents to that, yeah. and everyone's very clear that that's going on. Yeah. Uh, because that's really important. There's legalities. Well, in, in a lot of states, there's actually a legal requirement, and independent of the legal requirement, in addition to it, we just want to make philosophically that everybody feels like this is a really uh, 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 clear experience, uh, and that as, as long as everyone consents, that's a good feature, but we thought it would be cleaner to add it Later, after we're sort of we've kind of gotten people comfortable with socializes, and that there's the one mode of communication which is live, and the other mode of communication which is recording messages, and then we'll sort of bring them together in a way that uh, makes sense to people over time. Yeah, it, in socialize, you use the Facebook identity. Mm -hmm. Is the identity always kept? up to date from Facebook, so if, if let's say you change your relationship status, does it Yeah, and in show fact, you know, Facebook has very strict rules about, in terms of service around making sure that you just use that information in caching model and go back to Facebook to keep it up to date for exactly those reasons. So we are always checking back to Facebook to see who your current friends are. Um, we build on top of that information to build our own profiles and our own deeper information that we think is a appropriate for the product. And that's where I was going, oh. where, where is the future, because when I video somebody, that's an interesting mm -hmm. uh, example of they're really a friend, right? Or they're really somebody I want to have a, a tight relationship with, yeah. and you're able to study a social graph that Facebook probably doesn't even know. Well, right? we do a few things. One is, uh, if you, if let's say uh, you and I are friends, and you and Rob are friends, but Rob and I don't know each other, you can introduce the two of us, in, and we can have a three-way conversation, and then from within uh, Socialize, we can use the Facebook API to initiate a friend request between us that would then become a Facebook friend relationship. So we're not today creating separate separate friend graph from the Facebook one. We're feeding everything back into the Facebook graph. We do add features on top of it, like we have the geolocations of all the calls you've made. Uh, we have your messages that are specific to you. We have something called karma points, where uh, you know you kind of build up a reputation inside Socialize that's on top of whatever your, your Facebook uh, mode is. And we have this other feature called a Who Am I video that we strongly encourage people, literally on first use, uh, to come and create a message so that uh, if you're trying to decide whether you want to contact somebody on Socialize, uh, odds are very good that you'll get to see who they are in a video context which goes beyond uh, anything that's typically available on a Facebook profile. Yeah. Am I able to say, hey, I'm not available right now or, uh, you know, or I am available? Is, is there a way you to are communicate? Actually, yeah. Uh, not surprisingly. And we've been playing around again with the right model for that. We ended up basically keeping it really simple so you can put yourself into full do not disturb mode, which means that no one can call you. 
or you can put yourself just into only my friends can call me, uh, yeah. which is also a powerful. Or you mode. can be in fully open mode. Or you can yeah. be in anyone can call me mode. Are you guys thinking of an API so that I can build socialized features into my own web apps or my own, well, we you know, whatever? <laughs> <laughs> Between the two of us, we spent almost 20 years at Microsoft. Yeah, you know, I, so I, I figured that was platforms. Gonna, <laughs> that's the question. Uh, uh, you build a great application first, and then a platform will use to emerge from it. I mean, this is obviously a very, very hor horizontal layer, communication yeah. layer, and uh, if other people would like to build on top of it, that would be fantastic. Yeah. Uh, how are you guys going to make money with this since you're not charging? Um, well, I think, again, you start by building a really great product that's really engaging to end users, and that problem actually sort of takes care of itself once you have a large network of people on the site. Um, longer term, I think there's really two, two things. One is that the conversations that people are having on the site uh, are intrinsically high value to those indiv individuals. They're transactional, they're the most high value conversations and connections that people will make. Um, so there's lots of ways to figure out how to make money off of that uh, that are positive to the community. Uh, and then secondly, there's a lot of uh, premium features that you can add uh, for people who actually are uh, have productivity needs from the product or enterprise needs from the product. Yeah. And so I don't really have a major concern about how we'll end up making money. Yeah. Our goal is, we, you know, if we get to, if we get to, you know, if the sake of argument, we get to a million uh, active users a month or something, and then we could say, how hey, now we got this base of users, and you know, let's let's get to we could go from a million to five million to five million to ten million. But then you start to, you can start to get a sense of the patterns of the experience and the communication. And say, okay, here are ways that we could overlay uh, revenue on top of that that would be. Uh, 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 additive uh, experiences or certainly not distracting experiences. I mean, if you look at someone like uh, AdWords and Google, people don't mind them because they're semantically relevant. So, yeah. you know, if you have a, let's say you have a, a group about Ultimate Frisbee, well, clearly it might be a merchant who sells Frisbees, you know, or who sells, you know, Dayglow clothing or something that where, you know, if you're actually big fans of Ultimate Frisbee, being able to, to get content uh, or, 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 or commerce that's relevant to that experience uh, is probably additive and not distracting as long as we implement it in a sort of a side by side way that's not uh, disruptive to the core experience. Yeah. We, one problem, and we had it back in the net meeting days, mm -hmm. the early 90s, was uh, weirdos. <laughs> Tro <laughs> Trolls, weirdos, <laughs> naked people. I had a naked yeah. guy call me one day. Can I say I don't want any calls from people I haven't already friended in the system? Or You can or do that, um, okay. where you have pretty strong control over the people calling you. No one can actually connect to you unless you accept the call. We're actually looking at features such as giving you the option of playing that person's Who Am I video yep. before actually accepting the call, if okay. you so desire. And then we have, as, as we talked about, a somewhat deeper profile than you could find on Facebook. You can find out a lot about the quality of that person's yep. uh, participation in the community. And if somebody's being a jerk, you could, you're you going to have a reputation score that Yeah, and we have that. abuse reporting mechanisms. And the you know, person's going to be using their Facebook identity. Therefore, they're also in violation of Facebook terms of service. Yep. So it's a double edge. Yeah, we, but by having the foundation be Facebook Connect uh, identities, uh, we think it, it's very, very unlikely. It'll happen, but we think it'll be a very rare event for people to uh, uh, put something out there that, would, that they wouldn't we wanted to stand behind because it'll say that they're Robert Scoble or Rob Williams or Rob Williams. It'll say that's who they are. But we think a lot of people will like the groups feature and we'll find really interesting people. Uh, and some of it'll be you know stuff like Ultimate Frisbee. Uh, in a, a scenario that I, I found interesting, I was talking to my next door neighbor about this in, in Seattle and he's a prostate cancer survivor who actually does volunteer work so that he's on a, a, a cancer care website in Seattle where his email address is there and he gets three or four messages a week from people that are newly diagnosed. He told me that 130,000 men a year are newly diagnosed with prostate cancer in the US. It's a huge number. Um, and he, a lot of them want to have live human contact with somebody else who's been through it. Yeah. So when he found out about Socialize, he found that very appealing to have an opportunity to, to reach out uh, and, and also to create a network of other people who would volunteer to reach out to, uh, to be available for, for those folks who just get this, this new piece of news, this kind of bad news, and they, they're disoriented, and the first people they want to talk to about it uh, aren't necessarily their best friends, it's somebody who's been through that experience themselves. So uh, that absolutely. kind of power is, is, we think is something that, that social video and socializing in specific can enable. Now when you, when you first open it up, it, it looks like it does group uh, conferencing, right? Mm -hmm. And it sort of does. But it's a it's a, it's not a group like if I called you and then I called you, you guys don't know about each other yet, right? Unless, right. You, unless you connect us. So I can actually say, hey, I think it's time for you to talk to Rob. Exactly. It turns out that people actually find their own social interaction for that. It's very unlikely that you would call me and Rob and not tell the first person that you were talking to that you were about to call the other person. Yeah. But once you've established it and once you have those windows open, 
it's sort of just like having multiple people in the same room. You kind of mute a few, a few people back and get back to work. Yeah. Or, it's so like, or, if you're, or if you're on a meeting and you get a phone call, you might say to the person, hold on a second, and then pick up the phone. So similarly, if I'm talking to Rob and my wife calls, I might, you know, I might, say, I might put Rob on mute for a second and say, hey, honey, what's up? And then if it turns out that she just wants to ask what I want to have for dinner, I'll say, oh, hey, do you want to say hi to Rob? But if it turns out you know, she wants to, to, to tell me about the, the baby crying or something, maybe I'll, I'll keep that private and yep. I'll, I'll, I'll tell Rob, hey, I'll get back to you in a minute. But yeah. la lastly, uh, tell me about the fundamentals of the company, how many people work there, and, and how is it funded? Like sure. Yeah, we're uh, here, in, by the way, we're <laughs> here in the uh, Excel Partners uh, yeah. uh, Very lounge. fancy digs. Uh, oh, yeah. Very unlikely the digs. So this we isn't your <laughs> usual office. No. no. Uh, uh, we we invited you to San Francisco, <laughs> but the middle of the valley was the place you wanted to meet, and yeah. uh, I'm an adventure partner here, so the Excel guys were kind enough to make this facility uh, available to us, which was lovely of them. Right. Yeah, we actually have offices which think we think have even better karma than these offices. We have. Uh, the original Twitter offices, or well, their second offices uh, yeah. on Bryant Street, uh, which is a great place to be and very entrepreneurial. Um, we're now nearly 10 people. Um, we're funded by uh, Seed Round uh, from Rob and some other great angels in the Valley and in Seattle. And we raised our Series A from uh, Ignition Ventures in Seattle back uh, in the fall. Uh, and Brad Silverberg is on our board. Uh, fantastic. Uh, uh, yeah. Venture capitalist and very operational guy who was a uh, senior vice president for Windows back uh, when you were there, right? Yeah, uh, and the other guy, the yeah. other guy. Yeah, he there. left, I think, right when I joined. Right. Oh, really? They, yeah. I guess if they know you were coming, you might have stayed a little longer. I <laughs> know. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> might have been running. <laughs> yeah, the, the other, and the other A investors were uh, uh, Maynard Webb and his uh, Webb uh, Investment Network are also involved in our A round, and they're, they're great guys, and they obviously have a lot of inf uh, expertise about. Uh, both the consumer side of things through Maynard's uh, eBay experience, and then also with his uh, with his enterprise experience, uh, Maynard's great to be a part of our family as well. Very cool. Where do we find more information about you guys? Um, well, you can come to the website uh, www.socialize.com. Yep. Sign up. Play that's it, that's play social E Y E S for those <laughs> of you people that are literal. Yeah, it uh, works really well when uh, written down. Yeah. And uh, we're all uh, the same applications available inside of Facebook. So at apps.facebook.com/socialize. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What about Twitter? Oh, um, socialize <laughs> on okay. Twitter. Uh, yeah. And are you guys personally on Twitter? I am. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, um, so what's your Twitter address? I'm MTN Spring, S P R I N G. I'm a little more literal. I'm Rob Glazer. <laughs> Very cool. Well, thank you so much. Great seeing you, Rob. Thanks. Great, Thanks, Robert. great launch. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks so much.